has uh, taken on a, a very important role as Commissioner of Planning and Development uh, at the City of, uh, of Brampton. We're going to talk today about uh, some of the process uh, improvements that have been made and some specific tips that can help you uh, grow your business, expand your business. Uh, and uh, well, let's let's get right to, to it. We've uh, got with us today uh, Rick Kennard. Uh, he's got 23 years experience in the building industry. He serves as Chief Building Official for uh, the city of Brampton. He's authored two publications on the Ontario Building Code and Building Code uh, Act. Uh, Rick is focused on leveraging modern technology to streamline the regulation process and deliver municipal services in a very customer-centric uh, manner. The building division is in the midst of a transformation to a fully integrated digital, this is exciting, a fully integrated digital service platform uh, to be structurally aligned and to support all planning and uh, economic development. Welcome, Rick. We, we also have uh, with us uh, today, Alan Parsons. He is the Director of uh, Development uh, Services with the City of Brampton. He's responsible uh, in leading the city staff in the review and approval of planning and land development applications. We've got so many exciting uh, projects on the go here in uh, Brampton. He is a graduate of Ryerson's University, has over 20 years uh, experience in the development field. He's worked in both the U.S., North Dakota, Michigan, and uh, in different parts of Canada. He's a long-standing employee with the city of Brampton, having witnessed changes uh, in development forms uh, in the city from conventional low-rise to more uh, intensified urban uh, and mixed uh, used uh, forms. He uh, 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 continues to be a champion for implementing industry leading practices uh, at the city of uh, Brampton. And both of these uh, gentlemen uh, come uh, to us today highly regarded as does the boss. And we're gonna start off with our, our first question uh, to Richard uh, Forward. Uh, Richard is uh, the commissioner of planning as I uh, mentioned, planning and, uh, and development. And uh, what a, a wonderful resume he brings to our city. He's been with us for about 18 uh, months now. He has a, a sincere passion for uh, city building. He uh, looks for uh, ways to make connections uh, through common ground that attracts, that excites, and that unites uh, community partners and professionals about investment decisions. He's an avid humanitarian. He's uh, worked uh, in Iraq, Pakistan, Philippines, East uh, Ukraine, Congo, Haiti, uh, Grand Bahamas uh, on various aid and support uh, for uh, those impacted by natural disasters or war. Uh, you know, he's, he's just a great all-around guy. He's uh, got a positive impact on people, uh, has uh, been making some positive changes to, to culture, uh, brings people together around a shared cause, working together, sharing expertise. Richard is well positioned uh, to be part of the guiding uh, executive leadership uh, team toward uh, the Vision 2040. Welcome, Richard. So happy that you're here with us today as well. My pleasure to be here. Thank you. Richard, we're going to get uh, right into it. We're going to be talking about, uh, first off, the, the culture. Um, Brampton's reputation in the development committee and the development community is so important. Uh, you've been with the city now for uh, about 18 months. Talk to us about how the culture uh, has changed uh, in planning and economic uh, development in, uh, in recent times. Well, first, firstly, uh, Todd, thanks for the uh, invitation for us to be here. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm leading an exciting team. So culture really, to me, um, it's about community building. And community building is about partnerships. So as an organization, you've got to realize that you've got to build those partnerships in the community with the Board of Trade, with the developers, with, uh, you know, residents, you name it. And that's how you actually build, uh, build a community. And so part of Part of what I want to bring to Brampton is really focusing on three elements of, of how you build that, that partnership, how you build a community is around people, process, and technology. And so that's been the, that's been the framework that, that we've been using as a team, looking at uh, the resourcing. Uh, are we aligned in the right areas? Are we doing the right things? Looking at processes, are they efficient? Or, uh, can we change the processes? And then, what, and then again, what technology is necessary to help us kind of move us forward? So culture really is about, you know, how, how do you build a caring uh, organization? Like, really, you have to care about your community to really want to change things, to want to make things better, right? And so that's what uh, my team and myself have been doing for the last number of months. And uh, we've seen some really good progress, and especially with, in light of the pandemic, what's 
come out of here is some really uh, interesting um, improvements that staff have taken on themselves. And when you can, like when you can build change from the grass, like from the front lines to up through an organization, that's more lasting than uh, really trying to drive it from the top down. And so I'm excited. And the reason I'm excited is we've got a, we've got an energetic mayor, we've got a council that wants to get things done. And so as an administration, when you have that recipe, that's a recipe for success. So as an administration, you, you really want to look at that, realize that your, your, your mayor and your council want to get things done. The community wants us to see growth. And uh, so it's, it's an exciting time for us. And, uh, Part of that is changing the culture. So that's what oh, Richard, uh, you know, uh, you hit on so many important points there. And, and one in particular is uh, your dedication to uh, customer care, uh, care about our businesses, uh, about uh, the growth of our communities. Uh, we certainly have experienced uh, your and Alan and, uh, and Rick's uh, care uh, and understanding of uh, how important uh, time is uh, in uh, the development uh, process. Uh, I know through the pandemic, uh, Rick uh, uh, has uh, gone above and beyond the call of duty to hand deliver uh, building permits to uh, companies uh, that uh, needed them to uh, to expand. So um, I'm going to ask uh, uh, your, your team here a, a bit more uh, detail here about um, some of the application uh, times uh, for development approvals for building permits and uh, uh, how, what processes and, and technology have been put in place. The teams you, you lead, uh, th all three gentlemen, they very much determine how quickly businesses can grow. And for the viewers that are out to, uh, here today, you know, we've been able through the Board of Trade to, to bring some uh, specific issues, be it with home renovators, be it with uh, larger development applications. And these gentlemen certainly uh, uh, have been demonstrating the, uh, the care and walking uh, folks uh, and their teams walking folks uh, through the process. I, you know, I'm thinking earlier this uh, uh, last month, earlier this uh, summer, uh, when you developed a, a brand new uh, patio uh, patio extension uh, policy as uh, as well. I'm wondering if uh, you could just share with our viewers, uh, and viewers, by all means, if you have questions, uh, please include them in the chat. Please in include them in the Q&A. We'll try to get to them as well. But app application times for development approvals and building permits are, are a source of frustration for many in the business uh, uh, community. What are some of the new technologies and process improvements being adopted to reduce wait times, uh, speed up inspections, and generally enhance the experience for uh, business. Who'd like to start? Well, that's a great question, Todd. So I think we'll start, probably we'll start with uh, Rick in terms of just uh, skip the line and, and some of the processes that he's involved with. But you mentioned the patio program. I think uh, if I remember the numbers, 40, I think 46, 47 businesses were able to open patios with one to three business days. So that's that's a great uh, great uh, process there. So it, it certainly is. Kudos to your team for making that happen. Great. So who would like to talk uh, more about uh, uh, some of the uh, technology improvements that have been made? Hi, Todd. It's Rick. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, yep. we can. Okay. So. Great. So uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, you know, as you mentioned uh, at the beginning of this discussion. Uh, it, you know, this is a really exciting time for us in the building division, and we are, you know, right in the middle of some really, really big, really exciting changes. And, uh, you know, I, I want to say that I'm really proud of my team. Um, the, the building division in Brampton uh, is one of the build, uh, busiest building divisions across Canada. Uh, we do statistical comparisons every year, and, uh, and you know, 90% of the time, Brampton lands within the, you know, the top five uh, municipalities in terms of um, the, uh, the, uh, the cost of construction uh, across Canada. So we compare, you know, with cities like uh, Montreal, uh, Edmonton, Calgary, you know, we're right up there in that mix, which, which is incredible to see. Uh, but so one of the things that, that makes that challenging is, you know, being so busy doing the daily uh, reviews and, and inspections every day, it, it, you sort of lose track of, of the fact that you have to keep up with technology and keep up with uh, changing in your processes and efficiencies. And, and uh, this year uh, is really shown grit in the fact that, um, you know, they've, they've been able to introduce uh, some significant changes to, to our business. 
uh, amidst all of uh, this pandemic and and the busyness that uh, that we experienced in the building division. And uh, so just to touch based on a few of those things, we've we've launched uh, a service called Skip the Line. And uh, that's, uh, you know, Brampton's uh, a branding of of this technology, uh, but essentially what it what it does is, um, you know, we were experiencing uh, crowds of people at our, our at our front desk at our customer service desk, and uh, you know it's a frustrating experience to come into uh, the office um, with an application that you're hoping to submit, you know, within a, within 20 minutes, and you're sitting there waiting for two hours just to get to the counter, and so what this uh, what this uh, technology is essentially done is provided uh, blocks of time uh, that you can come in and and book depending on the service you're looking for um, and you can do this online uh, it, you book times you come in for that specific appointment and you submit your application without without uh, having to wait um, we've launched phase one of this which is the online booking so anybody who's come in for an ICI permit uh, knows right now that um, you know, you go online and you uh, request a, a time slot. You bring your application in. Uh, we we take it in, uh, no fuss, no mess, uh, and then you're on your way. Um, will be uh, ultimately uh, an in-house solution as well. There will be, uh, you know, a customer interface panel that you'll come in, uh, answer a few questions about what you're there to to do. And, uh, and then it will give you the appropriate available time slots uh, in, um, in the appropriate section. Now, one of the things that users might be experiencing right now is a bit of, uh, of a delay, like a bit of a forward uh, backlog in, in those uh, appointments. I think uh, right now we're booking into uh, late next week, maybe early the week after for those appointments. But uh, that, is, that is reflective of the, uh, the state we are currently in where staff are uh, only available essentially 40% uh, of the time, right? We don't have uh, our full complement of staff in the office all of the time right now. And, uh, and so that will uh, improve as we move into September. We're expecting to uh, up the uh, number of staff we have in the office at, at any, uh, so that should improve the, uh, the wait times. And we yeah, will be, Please, please Sorry, continue, go ahead. Rick. Yeah, I know we're uh, yeah. getting some uh, questions about uh, the link to skip uh, the line uh, as uh, well. But please, uh, please continue. Okay. Yes, and I can forward. Uh, uh, I don't know if I forwarded that to you in the past, Todd, but I can forward you the link. Uh, we are uh, working with IT to have a better landing page to sort of uh, announce for everybody where to find this uh, this link, uh, because yes, right now it is sort of hidden uh, in in our um, in our website, so uh, we're working with IT to to improve that, uh, recognizing that it's virtually impossible to find. Well, so, <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> well, that, that, that's great, uh, Rick. Uh, we do uh, uh, record our chat, and uh, you also have the capability of going back after uh, this interview to uh, uh, to include uh, the links. But uh, we'll make sure that our viewers uh, get uh, get that as well. But please continue. Uh, uh, other uh, improvements so that that skip the line uh, certainly seems like it would enhance uh, service, particularly during a pandemic when we're uh, all platooning uh, our staff or welcoming staffs uh, back now that we've entered uh, stage three. What else uh, uh, has, is, is happening that enhances that uh, the customer experience? Okay, so the, the other thing we've done, uh, obviously when, uh, when, we, uh, when our facilities closed down in March, we recognized that we needed to uh, have uh, online applications up and running uh, you know, well ahead of our anticipated schedule. So, uh, so again, we, for, for second unit applications and for miscellaneous residential, and for division uh, builders, we have launched an online service. And uh, so for now, we've, we've only been able to focus on the residential aspect of it, but we do have uh, online capabilities to accept applications uh, for that, uh, that uh, aspect of the industry. And, uh, and that's, that's been incredibly successful as well. Uh, I know there were a few uh, growing pains at, at the beginning in terms of working out uh, logistics, but uh, but the the uptake on that has been phenomenal. I mean, we receive upwards of uh, 50 submissions every day uh, through the online uh, application process. 
And, and that does two things. Uh, I mean, it moves us partly into that digital world so we can do concurrent review between our, our staff. It's not one after the other. It's everybody can take a look at it at the same time if they're available, which is fantastic. Uh, and, and it also removes that residential aspect from, from that customer service counter, which was, in all honesty, the majority of this, the people that we would see there. And so for the ICI industry, uh, it, it opens up availability for for that customer service, which is again fantastic. You're not there with a, you know, with the major employment project, uh, waiting for two hours for 15 people ahead of you trying to apply for basement finishes. Uh, they're they're taken out of the equation. So uh, so that's been a fantastic uh, improvement, and and you know staff uh, turned that around uh, remarkably quickly. Uh, there are challenges from the perspective that it, it isn't a fully integrated solution yet. So this is sort of the first phase of, of that online process. Uh, we do have um, online payments uh, that are scheduled to launch, uh, I think, mid-September is the date that I've been given. Uh, so that will, again, uh, you know, take some of the administrative work out of the callbacks uh, required to take uh, um, credit cards and whatnot. Uh, and then there will be uh, fully uh, full integration with our back office solution, which is which is called Amanda, uh, to uh, automatically make those attachments uh, and create the folder. Whereas right now it's a very manual process. So uh, so that that'll be a big uh, improvement. And in the the third major thing that we've done recently is we've we've launched something called Mobi Inspect. And again, it's, it's phase one of the process, but it's, what it's done is, is given full mobility to our inspection staff. Uh, so, you know, in the old world, uh, staff had to come into the office, get their to-do list for the day. They would print it out on a piece of paper. They would take that sheet of paper out with them and uh, traverse uh, all of Brampton to conduct their inspections and come back at the end of the day and, uh, and enter the results uh, in their computer. Uh, what they do now uh, is they have their to-do list for the day sent directly to their mobile device. Uh, they have a fully integrated uh, 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 interactive app on their on their phones, uh, and and that to-do list can be updated throughout the day, uh, which is fantastic. It, it can uh, chart the um, the best or optimal route for the inspector to take throughout the day to uh, provide the most efficient delivery of those inspections. And, and they can enter their real-time results. So now when they go out and do an inspection, they can enter the result right there on their phone. And, and that will link back to uh, a link that we have on what's called the GeoHub in Amanda. So, uh, so people can get uh, accurate results of, of that inspection within a, uh, an hour of the results being entered. Uh, they can log into the GeoHub, enter their address, and see what the result was for the inspection. Now, I say this is phase one because we're working uh, closely with, uh, with that technology provider, and uh, we'll be providing a, actually a uh, presentation to council, uh, I believe, in September about the potential, the full potential of, of this technology. And uh, so what we expect within the year is that um, you'll be able to get uh, – uh, real-time results right to your phone as an applicant or as a contractor and you'll be able to book the next inspection from your phone as well and not only will you get the attempt results but you'll get a consolidated list of each of the deficiencies that um, that were found if your inspection didn't pass uh, which i know is a, a source of contention uh, today with uh, with some of our contractors and residents so uh, so that'll be resolved uh, I, you know i expect within the next 12 months Wow, Rick, that's uh, fantastic. So three significant uh, technology uh, improvements uh, there. Skip the line, uh, the uh, file transfer protocol or the opportunity to uh, make uh, applications uh, digitally and uh, uh, the opportunity for concurrent review, uh, taking some time out of uh, the approval process. And then uh, uh, the third, the uh, uh, mobile uh, inspections and uh, the uh, uh, efficiencies that can uh, come about uh, with that uh, technology and, and new new stuff on the horizon as well. So uh, great to, to hear that. And thank you so much for uh, articulating uh, it. Richard, did you want to add anything? Well, certainly Alan can speak to what's happening on the development side. So you've just heard from the building side of it, which is all great. Uh, but there's also been technology uh, improvements in Alan's shop as well. Fantastic. Alan, go ahead. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, we're really excited, Todd, that uh, yeah, we, we've looked at and really now have uh, implemented various 
improvements, uh, technological improvements that really go through the, the entire development uh, process uh, that applies to all of our different uh, development applications for subdivision through just site plans and rezoning applications. And the, the, the key and, and initial improvements that we had made just with the, with the start of the, the pandemic was to allow business to proceed as, as usual uh, by allowing application submissions to, to be submitted to us uh, online. Uh, it was really critical for, for really not only for us to obviously continue with all of the development applications that were already submitted to us, uh, carry on with meetings with all of our uh, clients and uh, you know members of the public that want to be engaged on applications you know, through uh, you know, Skype and other mobile and video teleconferencing software and processing all of those applications through to special council meetings and, and the virtual public meetings that we've put in place, but to also allow uh, the new applications to come in. So we had set up a, an FTP site to, to allow that to occur. And so really the processing and receipt of new applications has been, uh, has been seamless. And so, yeah, we're really pleased to, to see that there is a, a great uh, participation in receiving all of our new development applications by, by way of that means. And so much so that, uh, that really what we're now going to be setting up as well beyond the, the FTP sites for uh, online submissions is really unrolling, rolling out the, the, a new phase of implementation uh, with our digital uh, development tracking software called Excella. And Excella really has been a great tool for us, a digital tool for us to track all of our development applications, but it will now be set up. Uh, it will be rolling out just in the beginning of fall here, uh, and a really a robust piece which will allow uh, the same online development to application submissions to occur, but in a much more smart way, uh, whereby uh, applicants will be able to, to submit through that application and they'll be able to track uh, really in a live way, all of the development applications through that Excella software system as well. They, they'll really no longer have to contact the, the planner or the managers working on a file to understand the status of their applications. But after they make that submission, they'll be uh, really able to pinpoint where uh, the application is and in the process approval uh, really standpoint and be able to understand the, the issues that are relating to that application, see the comments that have come through from all the, the various staff on their application, see all of that in a live manner. And so yeah, that, that'll be a, a great uh, really improvement that we really are excited to, to roll out very soon to, to all of our, our uh, customers. And well, that is a very good uh, improvement. Uh, how do you spell uh, Excella? And uh, certainly uh, uh, having more certainty and knowing where your development application uh, process is certainly reduces the anxiety for uh, folks that are uh, developing new uh, commercial subdivisions or, or other projects. How do we spell Excella? Definitely, yeah. And uh, Excella is a very popular tool that's used by many municipalities here in, uh, in Canada and in the States as well. It has a robust analytics associated with it as well. But uh, yeah, Excella is yeah, spelled A-C-C-E-L-A. -E and uh, it, it's a yeah, very popular branded tool that, that's out there. And so, yeah, really having that uh, with us, we've had it now uh, implemented for a, a year, but there's various stages of implementation and improvements that we're, that we're rolling out. And so this, this next stage uh, is gonna be a, a great one for us to use. And so now uh, beyond really, uh, the online application submissions and the live tracking that's going to be available to everyone, uh, we've looked at including uh, te technological advancements through uh, each of our other process steps as well. So uh, for instance, uh, now uh, both Richard and myself are providing uh, digital sign-offs uh, really at uh, key junctures of development processing. Uh, for site plan applications and uh, plan of subdivision applications to, to reduce any administrative times that there would be required in, uh, with, with more manual sign-offs. Uh, that also has uh, now all, uh, occurred with our, our legal agreements. So we've set up a, a new uh, digital software protocol uh, and uh, we're able to use for, for legal agreements 
So uh, even where we have uh, those those very formal uh, legal agreements, yeah, we we are able to uh, get away from uh, really manually uh, having the, the paperwork, you know, travel into the hands of the various individuals that have to provide sign-offs, which uh, could, you know, in some instances take, you know, days or, or weeks to, to travel around through to uh, leadership and then also to the region of Peel uh, to have their sign-offs. So, so that's a great improvement as well that we've been able to work out with our, our legal staff. And so, uh, and then really, as it relates to the, the time of, you know, COVID and the pandemic that we're currently in, you know, we're really pleased to uh, really have, uh, really in the, in the first possible instance, uh, we were able to, to put in place virtual public meetings to make sure that uh, business is flowing, uh, you know, very smoothly for, for all of our, our applicants and customers. You know, as soon as uh, the province put in place the, the legislation that enabled us to, to hold uh, virtual public meetings for, for all of our statutory public meetings. Uh, we are sure to, to take advantage of that with our clerks staff and uh, implement a, a new video software tool called WebEx and uh, that has allowed uh, staff and uh, our council to uh, work through that, that critical juncture in, in the process, the approvals process where we hear from residents and so it's so important to, to allow residents the opportunity to, to voice their uh, opinions, provide comments on all of our applications. And so they're able to do that, not only now by way of a uh, written correspondence, but attending in a live way through video conferencing as well. So, so the, you know, those, those are, are great pieces that, that we've now uh, made available to allow business to, and all of our important business functions to, to proceed. And then the, the other maybe final uh, digital elements that, uh, that we've uh, really already implemented and are using now is uh, the, the robust analytical software component of this Excella system. And so really it's able to identify and really track for us uh, every nuance of the approval process that, that we're going through with all of our different types of development applications to understand when the application has come in, you know, how long it's taken for some comments to flow through to us from our various commenting agencies, uh, how long it is before our, the public meeting occurs through our planning process, when it is that a, a recommendation report is able to proceed. So every little uh, juncture through the development approval process, we're now able to, to track, uh, charts, compare against uh, all of our other types of applications and uh, various you know, steps in our processing. So for, for us to, to look at that in a really analytical way and compare and really uh, benchmark ourselves to other municipalities is really an, an important piece. And so will it be able to then thereafter, you know, where, where we see that we can have some improvement in any one of those areas or maybe a particular commenting uh, agency we have to work with them on to understand that uh, a bottleneck needs to be corrected in a way we're, we're able to do that now so yeah that's uh, that Excella software you know is a great new tool that uh, that we're able to really uh, look to to utilize well and really improve our process flows for all of our all of our clients Alan, that, that is a wonderful uh, uh, review. The online applications, the uh, application tracking, the digital sign-offs, the uh, virtual public uh, meetings, and, uh, and now you've got uh, software uh, in place or soon to roll out that you can track and compare. Richard, did you have a comment on that? Yeah, there's a there's a saying, you've probably heard it, if you can't measure it, you can't to manage it, right? So uh, that's now what we're able to now to start to do is actually measure things uh, so that we can manage appropriately. Well, that's fantastic. And I think you know, uh, uh, Richard, that part of uh, the role of Brampton Board of Trade, not only as advocate uh, for uh, the business community, is cheerleader for our uh, community as well. And I remember Glenn Williams, a uh, dedicated volunteer of the board, past president of the board, and I stood before council uh, in uh, the winter. And uh, we uh, had a conversation with council about the budget, and about priorities. And uh, uh, in that conversation, we, uh, we talked about the importance. And 
wouldn't it be wonderful as part of the vision that uh, uh, that, that we have, the Vision 2040, uh, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could market our community as the one that not only has uh, the most care in terms of our planning and economic development, but uh, the fastest development uh, approval times as uh, well. So that's uh, certainly uh, an objective that uh, uh, we can all work forward to, to and it looks as though your department it has developed a number of uh, technologies to help with that and I think you've uh, got a boost from council as well uh, in the budget you were able to add uh, uh, some people as well this, uh, yeah, this year. That, yeah that's correct we, we were uh, we were able to get additional resources which helped out with the number of the backlog issues that Rick was talking about earlier but you know the reality Todd is that the role of municipal government and even provincial government and federal government is really to set the conditions in which somebody wants to invest in your community. Because if you think about it, somebody's going to spend 50 to $100 million on a development. They want to know their certainty. They want to know the process works. They don't want to go down a path and then suddenly have uh, things change on them. And so what uh, Rick and Alan have been talking about is putting in place those processes, the technology that helps kind of create the confidence that folks want to come into the community, know that they can move through a system. Folks don't mind going through a process as long as it's clear, it's transparent, and there's no, um, you know, there's no hiccup along the way. So that's what we've been working towards is building that certainty around the processes that we have. Wonderful. I, uh, uh, and, and, and you're absolutely right. Uh, businesses don't, uh, when, when, you, when you go to the basis of investment philosophy, uh, uh, certainty in terms of the process, certainty in terms of the timing uh, is a, a really important motivator to get those investments because it's a very competitive environment. Uh, we're competing uh, not only with uh, uh, neighboring municipalities, but other jurisdictions in southern part of the states uh, where, uh, uh, you know, our, our businesses often uh, have uh, folks knocking on their doors, uh, talking about uh, expansion and relocation and uh, et cetera. So, so happy to see that you've got a boost in people, you've got a boost in uh, uh, technology. I want to uh, touch base, I want to do two things. One, um, you mentioned that there was a backlog uh, earlier this uh, year. I think it's important for our viewers to um, understand specifically on the second unit uh, side of things, the uh, unique uh, challenges that uh, that Brampton has. I'm looking at a, a chart here that uh, you provided me uh, uh, earlier this uh, spring, you know, comparing 2019, the second unit applications just so our folks can get uh, a, a, an idea of the magnitude. Uh, uh, Mississauga, uh, in 2019, all of 2019, had uh, uh, 334 second unit applications. Vaughn had 52, smaller community. How many do you think Brampton had? Ladies and gentlemen, it was just under 3,100. They had 3,080. So the order of magnitude, even compared with uh, Mississauga, our, our closest uh, uh, neighbors, is uh, is ten uh, tenfold. Uh, so it, these improvements that have been made uh, in terms of boosting the number of uh, staff and technology are are so important just in that uh, one uh, area of uh, of inspections and uh, permit uh, uh, permit approvals. I want to go to uh, uh, questions from our uh, 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 from our viewers here today, uh, and um, uh, my last uh, question is is going to be around what uh, uh, companies can do, what businesses can do, what tips you might have for them uh, to enhance uh, the process. But let's let's go to a question uh, here from uh, that was uh, mentioned earlier: um, fiber optic ca cabling so uh, important uh, as many companies are doing uh, digital transformations. Uh, manufacturers are uh, making the uh, digital leap to what's called the industry 4.0 involving new technologies like internet of things, uh, uh, AI, machine learning, etc. I've got a question uh, from a local manufacturer. We are one street south of Queen Street between Kennedy and Hanson. Two years ago, we were quoted $25,000 to bring fiber optic cable uh, uh, from, our, uh, from Kennedy into our plant. Is there any uh, incentives or uh, other um, options through the city that can help uh, properly fiber optic uh, uh, companies? Uh, and this is, again, very close to our downtown. Any thoughts on, uh, on that, Richard? 
Well, I, I think uh, it, we, we experienced this, uh, because I was in at Barrie before Brampton. So uh, one of the things that we did in Barrie was that in all our reconstruction projects, we made sure that ducts were provided, um, basically the conduits, even though you may not have a plan at the moment for, for the fiber optic, but at least you don't have to come back and rip up a road to put in the uh, the conduit that's necessary for future fiber optics. So I have I have not had a chance to talk to my colleague Jazz Beard, who's the Commissioner of Public Works, to understand is you know is Brampton moving in that direction. But certainly that would be one of the things that you know I would want to see is on all reconstruction projects at least put the the blank ducts in 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 the ground. Wonderful. Thanks uh, for that. And, and you just gave me an idea. Just Beer is relatively new. Hey, we've got a new uh, member of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Bram yeah. Bramden Board of Trade. Uh, thank you for joining us, Fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> That's my rescue. <laughs> All the joys of working from uh, from yeah. home. <laughs> uh, yeah, you've given me an idea and uh, perhaps we'll have Just Beer uh, on yeah. Future expert series to talk about some of the wonderful public works uh, uh, projects that are happening uh, in our downtown LRT related center for uh, uh, innovation, uh, uh, etc. There's there's so many good things happening. It's it's an incredible time to be in. Like I tell this to people, like first of all, you've got growth. So as a municipality, you're going to grow. You've got population growth that's going to happen. You've got a council that wants to invest in infrastructure and get the key components that a community needs, right? And so. These are exciting times for anybody that's really a, as part of an administration to be part of that. Sure are, yeah. And you've got great companies like uh, Rio Can that have some very exciting. Uh, well, they're 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 blazing a new trail, right? I mean, it's we're now looking at um, the whole uh, retail uh, conversion into residential and, and mixed use developments, right? And that's that's the future. And Brampton is being is going to be used as the uh, especially with Shoppers World. As yeah. the test, as the test case for Canada, and yeah. so those are pretty neat things that are happening. They sure, they sure are. Uh, all right, uh, please feel free to uh, ask any other questions that you have of our uh, guest today. I'm going to continue with, uh, uh, which might be our, our our last question if we don't get any further, and that's really um, tips that uh, any uh, that you, you three gentlemen may have for business uh, approvals often require a frustrating back and forth uh, between company owners that want to expand uh, their plan their representative their planning or architect uh, rep and various approval agencies including the city so it might be the uh, toronto region conservation authority might be uh, the region as you've mentioned uh, earlier what advice would you have what tips would you have uh, for companies to be uh, best prepared uh, from their end uh, so that you've got what you need to uh, expedite uh, approvals. Any thoughts there? I, I, yeah, I think the biggest tip is that, so we offer a service, what's called pre-consultation, but we also do, we can also do pre-pre-consultation in the sense that if you have a thought or an idea in terms of your expansion, um, come in to, to talk to us before you even hire an architect or a planner, let's have a conversation. We can walk you through the process to again create that that understanding of what the process looks like and create the certainty around the process so before you go and invest a lot of money with the planners and architects come in and see us we're happy to have that conversation we can give you ideas and um, I know Alan you've uh, Alan you, you've uh, provided that service for folks and it's it's worked really well well, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, Todd, early engagement is really critical. And so, yeah, we, we, we do have a lot of uh, developers that are coming out to us and really uh, letting us know very early on about the you know, really exciting development applications that they're intending to come forward with and it's, you know, seeking some dialogue with us and you know, uh, identification of, of really uh, issues and sharing of ideas. But it, it's really important that really other individuals that are per, perhaps you know, not so um, familiar with the development process, uh, they also come out and reach out to us uh, for for their site specific projects as well. Yeah, staff, you know, uh, really the multidisciplinary teams that we have are able to share ideas and really share you know, where there may be issues uh, very early on and really in an informal way as well with uh, with anyone that's looking to make some physical changes or maybe a land use changes to their property so yes staff is more than you know willing and happy to to be able to sit down with somebody and just to understand 
informally what their project involves and share some ideas back and forth and just share with them uh, really what process steps uh, we'll, we'll really need to navigate and really work with them on so that they have as much information uh, early on as possible. I think that that's always been a, a great help to those that we've had conversation with on these things and for more people to, to take that step to reach out to us informally, I, I think uh, it'll be a, a great service to them. You know, that is uh, a clear demonstration of uh, the care uh, that Richard was referring to earlier in terms of uh, culture uh, for uh, uh, early engagement, for pre-pre-consulting to be welcomed uh, is not common. Uh, I have worked for a number of, uh, in a number of municipalities on behalf of business communities over the last 20 years. And uh, there are uh, some in the planning profession that uh, are reluctant uh, to provide uh, and, and share ideas. And it's so welcoming to see that uh, you folks are, uh, uh, you know, explicitly saying, yes, uh, uh, help us understand uh, your project. And I've seen that evidenced with the clients that uh, uh, we've uh, we've brought uh, together, we've, that we've uh, shared. Any other uh, thoughts or, or uh, tips uh, for uh, business? Uh, I do see we've got another question here uh, uh, from uh, uh, viewers, but uh, can we go to that or other thoughts? Well, well I, th I think that early engagement is a very, very important uh, tip and uh, getting to know uh, the software and the process. Hopefully folks will uh, come back and review uh, this expert uh, series uh, discussion and uh, uh, take advantage of uh, the new software that uh, uh, digital online applications, et cetera, that are available, the, uh, the queuing, the skip the line, et cetera. We have a question about uh, uh, development, another uh, infrastructure project. Transit is so important uh, to the growth and uh, to to, to the, to the uh, uh, growth of companies, but also to the growth of uh, the urban development, the city building of, uh, of our community. What's the latest update uh, for, Queens, for the Queen Street land use study? Uh, what are the next steps, uh, uh, timeline implementation? Uh, uh, and, and I believe that BRT is proposed for that as well. Yeah, so we're so basically we're uh, my understanding is with Metrolinx is that the, the business case is moving forward for the Queen Street BRT. So that's exciting news for us. Um, so that's kind of in, in, imminent in terms of the decision making for Metrolinx. One of the interesting things, and again, this is a good team that we've got here. Uh, they actually built a, uh, a and you should see it as a three dimensional modeling of Queen Street and what it could look like in the future. So this is actually taking a progressive approach to planning. So uh, laying out where the community center should be, where the, you know, the, all the components that m makes a, a community, laying that out along the Queen Street uh, corridor. And then also showing uh, how the various heights, the, you know, the density and the height could work. So again, what that's creating is that's creating the conditions where folks that are kicking the tires or want to come to invest can see that, oh, well, you know, this is this area here has this potential to, to grow, right? And so our urban design folks have been uh, very busy working towards creating that visual image of what Queen Street could look like. So it's, uh, it's coming along nicely. And so it's now about uh, creating, uh, working with the school boards, working with other public service groups to say, okay, you now have to start planning for where those schools are going to be because you really want the schools to be there before you don't want to wait for the schools after people have moved in for a decade, right? So you want to start to create the planning around all that stuff. And so that's all coming together nicely. Fantastic. Well, that's uh, great. And uh, you mentioned uh, the 3D model. Is, is that a, a digital 3D model or is it's, it a physical one? Well, it's, well, it's a combination. They've, I know that they've, they've made a, a physical one, but they've also uh, worked towards a 3D uh, model. And I think I'll let Rick jump in on this one because he's looking at um, virtual inspections by... Uh, three-dimensional uh, inspection. So Rick, uh, you want to you wanna just chat about that one? Because that's a pretty cool concept too. Thanks Richard, it, it is actually. It's, it's um, so this is slated for uh, uh, probably 2022 uh, to come into the city, but uh, what, we're, what we're investing in is uh, a 360 degree uh, virtual room. And uh, so, so we've seen these uh, uh, put to use in, in various areas, but uh, it, it's going to be an immersive experience that we can use for not only for training our staff, which is our primary uh, need to, to recreate uh, a construction site in a controlled environment, in a safe environment for, for new staff, and, and to, to be able to have 
uh, you know, 10 or 12 people in the room uh, and explain how things should be looked at and what to look for in certain situations and to have consistency of interpretation. Uh, but, but from a urban design perspective, it allows an immersive experience into these 3D models. So you'll literally be able to enter this, this virtual room and walk the streets to see what uh, a future development might look like. Uh, so yes, it's a very exciting technology. Uh, the one in particular, I believe it's Igloo is the, uh, uh, the provider that, uh, that we've been uh, looking at. Uh, so if anybody has a chance to, you know, go onto their website and, and uh, check it out, it's, uh, it's remarkable, this, uh, this technology. And, and, part, of, and, and part, of, part of that is, is really letting the public see, like, you can take away a lot of the fear in terms of density and height and those, those kinds of things when you actually, you can visualize how that built form looks uh, adjacent to an existing residential development, for example, so. And, and Richard and Todd, perhaps I'll, I'll just add that really the another really element of really what we're doing uh, that that's quite exciting along that Queen Street East corridor is you know, setting up a, a community permit system. Uh, the community planning permit system is a, a really a, a way for the city to essentially pre-zone the lands uh, to allow these new exciting development forms, this higher density redevelopment of, of this important stretch of the city. So occur in, in a, a much quicker way, you know, with the, the community planning permit system in, in place and essentially that that rezoning, uh, it could take you know up to a, a year off of the development uh, application processing time. Re, a rezoning application, and uh, oftentimes it involves an an application to amend the official plan. You know, th those are processes you know that take multiple uh, months to be able to, to process and get final approval on you know so for us to uh, really essentially pre-zone those lands to provide uh, permission as of right for certain development forms on those lands it, it'll be a, a significant reduction in processing times uh, for all those lands uh, to go through at a later point in time when it is that the, that the owners are, are wanting to take advantage of those development rights and it'll essentially just be a, a site plan process that, that we'll have to uh, be processed and provided approvals for 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 those lands. So yeah, that that's really groundbreaking stuff. Uh, really, it's uh, only been a couple of instances throughout the province where municipalities have taken advantage of uh, some of these tools in the Planning Act, uh, like the development permit system, which is now referred to as a community planning permit system. So you know, it's, Brampton, we we've done that in in one instance before for North Main Street. We're looking to do that here for this Queen Street East corridor as well. So uh, it's really groundbreaking and exciting stuff that we're pleased to, to offer up for all those landowners. Wow, that's uh, that's that's great. Uh, well, gentlemen, this has uh, been uh, been really, really that is a very, very exciting. Uh, um, we've got uh, Christy. Uh, can you please check the Q&A to see if there are any other questions uh, uh, that I may have uh, missed? I can see the ones uh, through chat, but uh, I, I don't see any through Q&A. So maybe all of our viewers used uh, the chat. We do have one question there, which is, uh, Richard, what is the name of your cat? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Oliver Walter. <laughs> Oliver Walter. That's a very sophisticated name. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a rescue, so. He's a good, oh, he's wonderful, good. wonderful. That's great. Um, okay, well, gentlemen, thank you uh, so much uh, for your time today. I'm going to ask uh, Christy to put up uh, some phone numbers in the chat. Uh, uh, I forwarded uh, an email to her with uh, uh, phone numbers. Uh, for the building division website and help you with uh, uh, permits. Building permits is 905-874-2401. Zoning, uh, 905-874-2090. And inspections, 905-874-3700. Uh, we'll uh, put those uh, up. Any uh, final uh, uh, comments uh, from our uh, guests uh, here today on, uh, this has been a very uh, comprehensive and uh, inspiring uh, conversation about uh, ways uh, businesses can uh, um, work with you to get approvals quickly. Any other uh, thoughts, uh, gentlemen? No, just thanks, Todd, for the opportunity. I mean, it's important to have, uh, you know, these conversations and uh, my team is excited. Um, as I said, we're building a culture of care and uh, that's what it's about in terms of uh, the businesses. Uh, you know, you have to, you have to have an organization that cares.
Thank you. That's uh, that's wonderful, and you certainly demonstrated uh, that uh, today. Okay. Uh, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you again uh, for an extended uh, expert series. We had a lot to talk about uh, uh, today. Uh, coming up, we've got some uh, amazing events uh, again to help uh, uh, you meet people that can help you grow your uh, business, potential customers, uh, suppliers, etc. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Friday, we have our coffee check-in. It's uh, 10 o'clock where you have an opportunity to uh, go. We have an opportunity to go deep into your uh, company, talk about some opportunities that you might have or challenges that you're trying to overcome and uh, we match uh, services or people we know to help uh, help you with it. That's tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock for members of the Brampton Board of Trade. On Monday, we have an expert series with a company called BSC Solutions. Uh, this is a, a local member of the uh, uh, Brampton Board of Trade that will help you with um, uh, something that keeps a lot of businesses up at night, uh, the fear of being hacked. So the focus will be on uh, practical tips to help you with your cyber security. Also, don't forget every Wednesday morning, we have our Wake Up Wednesdays, uh, an opportunity again for you to uh, network, meet some great people that can help uh, your business. That's at 8 a.m. And uh, uh, you can get more, you can see this uh, session again. Uh, we've recorded it as part of our expert series at bramptonbot.com slash experts series. Uh, I mentioned our reopening resources at BramptonBOT.com reopening slash reopening resources. And I want to say a special thank you to our sponsors that have helped uh, this experts uh, help sponsor this expert series. It's part of our business comp uh, business uh, continuity pull through plan for Brampton businesses. We could not do this without the support of Toronto Pearson Airport, uh, CN uh, Rail, uh, Goodison uh, Insurance, and the great people at uh, Deloitte, uh, uh, Deloitte and Deloitte uh, Private providing great advice uh, to companies as we not only respond, recover, but thrive through this pandemic. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention today. Thank you to our guests. We look forward to seeing you again real soon. Take care now. Thank you, Todd.